Thank you very much for taking the time to do this. What is this new arena going to offer you and fans that Capital One couldn't? And also, was crime in this area part of the reason you decided to propose this move? Um, well, the compelling reason that we would consider moving to Virginia is it's still the DMV. It's three and a half miles from here. But it's the ability to program and create um, what I think will be the world's most family-friendly, fan-friendly set of arenas, performance centers, restaurants, shopping, all in one place. And to have the ability to have 12 acres and options on more in that 70-acre site in a environment where you can build much higher than you can here because of the height restrictions just made it such a compelling future and that's what I was most focused on. What will sports be looking like? What will the fan experience be looking like 10, 20, 30 years from now? It, this has been a great home for us and we appreciate everything about it but it's three acres and it's very hard to expand. Uh, we've moved here. You're walking around seeing these office buildings. We bought our network, our RSN, and we've put this here. Um, but it was very hard to find the space. In fact, we don't have all of our employees in one unit. And we can go out there, and people that are in four different buildings, they can all be in one building, and we can build a building to height that's higher than any building that can be here. So it really was a an issue of the potential of having this blank slate, if you will, and starting from scratch and imagining how can we build an iconic um, next generation, kind of all digital interactive campus to be in service to our fans, our players, our employees, and then the community at whole. The crime in this area has been no secret. It has been a challenge. It happens right outside your door. Did that factor into this decision? Much less than I think everyone is talking about. I have faith in the city and the mayor and the city council and the police that they're going to take this seriously. Most big cities have these kinds of issues. Um, I'd say the, a bigger issue was um, how do we bring the federal government, the police, the police union, the city council, the mayor, business leaders, all together around a focus on how do we turn around downtown DC. I think the city is capable of doing it. The only thing they couldn't offer me was 70 acres on the water on a brand new metro stop. And that's a very unique opportunity. There's no other piece of land in the country in a metro area that is of that size that's undeveloped. And I didn't even know it was there when I first went out there and they took me on the roof of this brand new building and you're looking, you know, there's Amazon, there's Virginia Tech, there's the airport. It really was enlightening and here we we just squeezed in and it shows itself in lots of ways that make for little inconveniences. We're on 6th Street and WMATA is blowing up their building and next door they've put an outdoor dining area um, well this block is very small and it's where we deliver all of the goods and when we have concerts where the bands and the roadies install mm -hmm. well now all of a sudden it's like well six streets kind of closed and they put this dining area right outside it's made it one lane People can't park, people can't make U-turns, we can't get the trucks in. Out there, we go, well, we would never design from scratch the ability to not be able to get trucks in with the equipment. We have 200 parking spots here, there'll be 2,500 parking spots there. Mm. So, so it just was this ability to look at and control the land and be very, very bespoke and very thoughtful and mindful about the fan experience and the player experience. And, you know, I know there's been a lot of discussion about the traffic. Um, I live with traffic every day. No one hates traffic more than me. And a lot of people are concerned about it out there. 
Yes, and, and they have every right to be, but there's traffic today. We want to be a solution to the traffic. You have to take a look and keep hearing about the metro stop. Mm -hmm. And I go, and well. I say, and is it big enough? And can it handle it? Okay, but let's look. look I'm glad you asked that question. So Nationals Park had a metro stop. Their stadium is twice as big as our arena. Same amount of cars as Potomac, same size of, so what did the Nationals do? What did the city do to accommodate the Nationals? They added two elevators. They added um, easier ways to get in and out, but they, they didn't have to do anything to the actual track. They didn't have to do anything to the, to the um, station. Well, that's what we're gonna have to do there. We're gonna have to make the walkway bigger that's an easy fix. We're going to have to add elevators, escalators. I view that as a part of a <clears throat> tapestry of solutions that we have to come up with. Um, I think because it's a blank slate and all of the technology will be under control <clears throat> and we're very data driven, we can make that a smart campus. We can redo all of the <clears throat> infrastructure on the lights. <laughs> to be able to sync the lights. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've been looking at best practices on all of the arenas where it works, where traffic is mitigated. And so I'm looking forward to being a part of a solution, not being additive. And I also think there's a lot of myths out there. I, I live in Maryland. Um, I said, I'm hearing that it's gonna be harder to get from Maryland to the games. And is anybody from Maryland gonna come all that way? Yeah, because it's, for me, it's eight minutes shorter today of a trip to Potomac. I live in Potomac, Maryland. I come to GWP. The GWP construction right now is horrific. It'll be done in 2025, well before we move in. It's a straight shot for me against traffic, right? If I'm working at home and I leave to go to the game, I have to drive down GWP and then I can go K Street, I can go, um, I can go Constitution Avenue. It's very hard getting cross town. Now I just go straight down, go to Route 1. So I think once the fans actually experience it and GWP is fixed, we do some things around Route 1, we do things on Metro, we really plan out with Uber and Lyft. Um, you look at Golden State, they've done magnificent work <clears throat> with being able to have Uber and holding pens for Uber. Um, the parking um, is redolent for us, 2,500 on the, on the campus, and then there's empty office buildings with parking. We'll have shuttles. So I don't think the fears are uh, misguided. No, I think everyone should, <clears throat> we should hear everyone's voice. But when you're an entrepreneur, you solve problems. And it's like, okay, well, tell me what the problem is. And we can go at it one by one. And here we have more control over the environment, where in DC, we don't have much control what goes on outside. You have been a part of this DC community for decades. Have you been hurt or surprised by the suggestion that you're abandoning DC? <clears throat> Yeah, personally, I've been hurt, but that's my personality. I'm, I'm, I'm not your typical average business person. I, I care what people think. Um, and, and I've been surprised at the social media response. Um, you know, you're moving to another state. And I go, well, we, it's closer than Ward 8. We, we have a building um, that we lease from Events DC where the Mystics play, and it's longer and further away from Capital One Arena in Ward 8 than going to Potomac. So I, I've always viewed, um, I've lived in Virginia, we have real estate in DC, I live in Potomac, Maryland now. I viewed regionalism, the DMV, when I was at America Online, people asked me, where do you live? I'd say Washington. I mean, that was the identifier. Uh, where was the internet invented? 
Al Gore said, I invented the internet in Washington, D.C. It's actually Virginia, right? Where do you fly in and out of? Uh, the Washington Reagan National Airport. Oh, that's in Virginia. And so we, we look at it as being one region, but I, I understand now um, people saying, well, it's not Washington. What I don't feel is that, you mean, it's downtown DC, it's, it's F Street and 6th and 7th Street. That's never been my um, major focus. My major focus has been our media market, which is Richmond all the way to mm. Delaware, but I understand the role we play here in business. It's very, very important, and, but we can't do it alone. We have to be a part of the community. <clears throat> and if I had my way, we wouldn't be leaving. I'd want to keep the building. I'd want to be challenged to fill this building up as many nights as we could. So that wasn't a foregone conclusion from the start that the plan was to move to Northern Virginia. Um, my plan is to build the world's most valuable and important regional sports and entertainment company. Um, I haven't been shy about saying I'd like to acquire other teams. We want to own and operate multiple buildings. And I think we can have a building that is like you've never seen, world-class, iconic in Northern Virginia, and keep this building in downtown DC. <clears throat> host sporting events, host professional leagues here, have concerts here, um, pay taxes, employ a lot of people. And that I find is a big social responsibility. And we want to be a part of the solution to help this community keep rising up. And, you know, that we weren't invited to be on the, the, uh, council to reimagine what's happening in downtown DC. In fact, the mayor says she doesn't want to work with you anymore if no, you take the no, teams. No. Didn't she say that? No, I think the mayor and the city... I read that. I, I bet if you ask the mayor that she would be appreciative that we employ a lot of people, we pay a lot of taxes, we've upgraded the building, if we were to move and keep this building here in Washington, D.C., I wouldn't be asking the city for any monies. Um, I just put $200 million into the building. It looks great. Look at, look at the investment in this brand new building and the major investment that we've made in the digital studios. We care. We're a business of size and scale. We hire union employees. We have 1,500 union employees that work at, in this building. We'll add another 1,500 or 2,000 in Virginia. That, that is a responsibility as a CEO of a company to be able to make big decisions, hard decisions that verify and secure what your future is going to be. And I just believe for the next 30 years, having this opportunity to build something from scratch, really, really big, really, really unique, but also keep this building going for the benefit of the community. We'll pay taxes here, we'll pay lease dollars here, and I think we're good enough and big enough as a company to be able to do both. I got to wrap. There's one, yep, you have one last question. Sure. Is there any chance that the Wizards and the Caps stay at Capital One Arena? Well, right now the die is cast. We've, we've declared our major, which is this piece of land and the partners, JBG, uh, the state, the city of Alexandria, we're all moving forward there. But it has to be voted on. And the delegates have to vote on it. And, and so right now I would handicap it that we're going. But, you know, until that's why you play the game, right? Until, until there's a final outcome. Um, and I still love Washington, D.C. Uh, yesterday I was at Georgetown University dedication of new hospital. And my family's made significant investments there. I, right around the corner is the Leonsis Family Venture Fund. We launch businesses. On Connecticut Avenue is my, is my private equity firm and venture firm with Steve Case. We did Kava, the most successful 
IPO of the Delicious. Year. Very good, crazy Fed. I recommend it highly. <laughs> oh, it's very and, good. And then I run and will continue to run DC CAP, which is the largest scholarship program for students in the city. I love the city. And, you know, I don't feel I'm abandoning the city by moving three and a half miles away. When we help um, through our Greater Washington Partnership Initiative to bring Amazon here, the theme that resonated best with them was when one wins, we all win. This region is really dynamic and important as Virginia, Maryland, and D.C. Standalone, kind of small states in a very small city. This D.C. is a city on its own, 600,000 people. It's like Charlotte. Mm -hmm. It's like Memphis. But, you know, you take 9 million people in Virginia and 7 million people in Maryland, 600,000 people in Washington, D.C. Now you have a super region, and that's where our fans come. That's our media market. So from a business standpoint, we don't feel we've done anything interruptive. But I, I have empathy. I understand people are feeling that downtown D.C., that this was a great place, and it is a great place for a building. We just have to look at what's the next 30 years going to be like, and I think we can achieve what our vision is to be the most fan-friendly, player-friendly destination campus and start from scratch, build something new. And, you know, the reason that mortgages are 30 years is that's what the lifetime of a building usually is. And, and you know, we've been pumping a lot of money into this building, putting big, big money into a 30-year-old building is riskier mm -hmm. than starting from scratch and standing that up uh, and with the vision that we have. Mr. Leonsis, we appreciate your time. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.